Good evening, class. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Well, welcome to week five. It's our last live class together. Uh, this evening will will be probably crisp, uh, the way we've redesigned. As you may remember from last week, uh, my concern was that I felt they were trying to push too much at you at one time. So we agreed that tonight the PowerPoint presentation would be for the uh, first part one, and then the team can work on the uh, part two part of it throughout this next week and submit it by the end of the week for for a final grade, rather than trying to make you get them both ready for this evening. Uh, and hopefully that will help you as far as spreading out the work a little bit more uh, evenly. So what we'll be doing this evening is we'll start with uh, with uh, uh, the t each of the team presentations for the assignment one, which is the one you submitted, I believe, back in week three. Uh, I'm going to ask someone from your team to whoever has the, the latest copy of the PowerPoint to drive the presentation. The rest of us will observe. All members of the team need to help to make the presentation if possible. And then uh, uh, after each presentation, then the class will be asked to give feedback. Your grade will be the team portion for the team presentation and your engagement in the question and answer afterwards. So I don't expect you to necessarily ask questions of every single team, but I do expect you to ask at least one question in the, uh, in the discussion forum that's either uh, asking th something about the presentation or giving a recommendation to the team about the presentation. Uh, and so far, David's team is asked to go first, and I agreed to let them do that since they asked to fall on their sword first. Uh, we'll then, uh, once we've completed that, uh, that presentation process, then what we'll do is we'll, uh, then proceed to, uh, to have a discussion about just a recap basically of what we've covered during the course as we wrap up and go into our final week together. Uh, and then this next week, you'll just have your, your presentation, uh, to submit for part two. Uh, before the end of the week, I think I've asked for it by Sunday, yeah, by Sunday the second, if possible. That's to give me at least a month, I mean a month, a night to review it and give you feedback so that if there's anything that you want to tweak, you have an opportunity to improve your grade. And then the discussion question uh, for this week, and that's pretty much it. You'll have a, you should have a reasonably good week. Uh, any questions before we get started or comments? Okay, then as uh, as David's group is making his presentation, if, if the other groups want to think about who wants to go next, you can always send me a chat note as far as uh, which groups would like to go in sequence and who's going to be the uh, driver for your group. So let me, uh, David, I'm going to give you uh, uh, control. You should see a, a, uh, access come up on your screen that you can approve and and take over. And I'll shut up and let you and your team drive your discussion. All right. Can you see, can everybody see my screen? I see it. Great. Okay. Right. So we'll start out the uh, team variation. That's um, me, Dave Garkey, Ron, and Samuel. So um, champion, or champion organization description and mission statement. Um, our project is being done at um, Eaton, and Eaton's mission statement is um, to provide safe, reliable, and efficient, sustainable power management solutions for our global customers. And then uh, a little bit about Eaton, the description of Eaton is that um, we're actually a composite of five different segments, electrical products, electrical systems, and service, aerospace, hydraulics and vehicle. Um, our sales last year were 19.7 billion and uh, we have approximately 95,000 employees. Uh, we do business in 175 countries and we have over 5,000 plants worldwide. So a list of the uh, 
senior day to day champions uh, in their positions is for our uh, MVP. Um, Joe Asano, he's a value stream manager. He's the main champion, point of contact for um, for us at Eaton. And then we have two other um, day-to-day champions that uh, we deal with for different information we need. One's Rob Daniels, he's a quality engineer. And uh, Samir Saran, he's a product engineer for uh, manufacturing on the floor. So um, our problem statement and opportunity for our MVP is to reduce spring load failures um, on a, a specific part number uh, by reducing process variation. The current process has 40% fallout due to process variation. Um, and that can be from the, a load failure at high end or low end. Um, the process is currently costing $24,000 a month in scrap. Um, when in full production, it'll be about 48K uh, per month in scrap. The measurable component here is um, first pass yield for the spring load of the um, actual seal assembly that we're looking at. Um, this project will reduce the rework and scrap costs while um, also reducing risk to line stoppage at our customer. Sam. Okay, uh, I'm Sam Taylor. Uh, so on this slide, we're talking about um, how our MVP is contributing to the champions overall strategic priorities um, and the organizational goals. <clears throat> uh, the linkage between the two is that the company needs to reduce the scrap and rework due to spring rate uh, of the of the product being out of tolerance. This is the variation that uh, Dave was just talking about. Uh, our goal is to reduce the amount of rework and scrap. Uh, this is going to combine both the needs of Eaton for this process uh, improvement and the factory cost out by NGS students, uh, us doing the, the process analysis. Uh, the plant has a yearly cost out goal along with scrap and rework goals. This project will help in all three areas. Next slide. <clears throat> So uh, our, the, the process of us uh, dealing with um, the value stream manager, um, we are meeting monthly, or the team lead, Dave, will, uh, is meeting with the value stream manager monthly. Um, and that is our day-to-day -day champion. Uh, discuss the, pro the, the progress of our continuous improvement. Um, and then we're also gonna be providing the status reports um, detailing the current variation numbers in relation to the previous month's performance as well as the year-to-date averages. Um, and then we're going to be briefing the overall project on a dashboard that contains all our milestones and uh, actions as well as do-outs. Um, next slide. Uh, okay, this is uh, Ron. So uh, I'm going to round out the presentation with um, kind of a review of uh, what an affinity diagram is and a um, SWOT that we learned uh, during this class. So firstly, um, affinity diagram, uh, it's basically, um, it's an organized output from brainstorming sessions. It's, it's actually one of the uh, seven management and planning tools that we have, um, not to confuse it with the seven tools of quality. We've learned quite a few um, lately. Those are your interrelationship diagram, tree diagram, prioritization matrix, quality tables, but what I'm uh, focused right now on the affinity diagram. Essentially, um, this is uh, uh, a way to generate and organize and kind of consolidate information concerning, you know, whatever your process, your product, any complex issue, issue or problem uh, that you have. Um, it, 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 it empowers the team to be more creative and allows for instinct uh, to kind of guide the grouping of all these things that uh, that that make up the the whole uh, process uh, an example is uh, for example uh, members of leadership team may use the diagram during a strategic plan to kind of organize their thoughts and ideas or an improvement team can use the diagram to actually analyze the common cause variation in some of the projects that they have um, Usually, uh, it's usually used when, like I said, situations are unknown to the team. 
circumstances are confusing and or, or disorganized, kind of like one of the examples that I said, and uh, or when basically a new team is formed, when you have diverse people of different backgrounds kind of coming in together and try to kind of align all those ideas. Uh, next slide. SWOT analysis. Uh, this is uh, SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, strengths are factors of the business or project that uh, give give the uh, the business advantage over others. Um, Oppositely, weaknesses are factors of business that uh, put it at a disadvantage to others. Opportunities are factors in the environment that could exploit those advantages and the threats are just, uh, that could cause trouble for the business or project. Uh, next slide. Uh, here's kind of a, a diagram and kind of like a guide that uh, we like to use. Um, essentially, when I was saying about the strengths and the weaknesses, the, the main point is that these are internal factors to an organization. Uh, strengths are helpful uh, internally, uh, weaknesses are harmful internally. And on the other hand, the opportunities and threats are external factors. So things outside of the business that uh, can give us opportunities or threats. Um, I think that's basically what I want to say on that. Uh, so I uh, wanted to combine both of them. So how do you, how do, you do that? Basically, um, you, you get everybody in a group. You basically consider all the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Write them all on sticky notes and place them on a board or a wall. Uh, usually, I like to spend 15 minutes on just kind of like uh, spitballing ideas and just writing it down. A facilitator can easily um, just stand in front of the, the classroom, for example, and just have have ideas uh, shout at him while he writes them down, puts on sticky notes. Or what I like to do is kind of have everybody on their own accord just take the 15 minutes with a big sticky note pad and write on their own and come up and, and paste them up on the wall at will. Um, then after 15 minutes are done, the facilitator, facilitator will group the sticky notes. He'll actually get up in front of everybody, kind of work it out where kind of like for like uh, sticky notes kind of fall within each other and kind of like group them together. They will, uh, once once we kind of uh, slowly group these sticky notes to their, their respective places, um, then we all start reviewing each note and kind of this sort, the, the main point of all this is to kind of um, get a conversation going, get a discussion going in which like all these ideas can be thought out. Um, some of the things that people or thinking can be understood by others and you kind of get a clear understanding so you can kind of see how powerful it is where everything kind of gets divided and conquered and then conquered by understanding by the group. And then once you really have uh, the groupings and you've removed all, all doubts or removed all the ones that aren't necessary to put on, then we could uh, finalize all the group notes into meaningful kind of actions thereafter. Um, I think that's it for that slide. The uh, logistical requirements, uh, just simply, you kind of want your key people to be there. That includes your senior championship, stakeholders, your day-to-day -day champion, of course, your SMEs and quality, and of course, that uh, the, the facilitator, facilitator I was talking about. Usually a large room, uh, kind of an open space, and that's something that's cramped and everything, because remember, we want to entice like creativity and uh, trying to get people's ideas to, to come out. And sticky notes. Um, I like to use sticky notes. They're kind of like a, a low, low budget item that can be used very powerfully in, in this uh, in this initiative. So uh, and um, and also markers. So these are basically what's needed. Uh, I think the the most important point is to have the people there and a person who can lead these people into a into a good um, a good process here. Next slide. Uh, this, is, this is just kind of a reference slide from our whole deck. And I think that's it. Um, I can open the floor now for any questions, concerns, comments I can answer. Okay, class, anyone? Hey, what's up, Jay? Good evening. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, t we'll, we'll get everybody. Go ahead, Judy. Okay, thanks, Jay. 
Um, well, the question I have in the beginning, you explained how far out worldwide you were located your organization was located. I was wondering, looking at the SWAT, what would you say would be one of the witnesses be whether um, being so far out there and uh, worldwide? Have you experienced any difficulties? Have the organization experienced any difficulties in managing those shops to those different organizations out, out there in different many countries, different, many cultures, and so on? Uh, we we actually started doing our SWAT as part of the other uh, team assignment, and one of our strengths was actually the management that we do have. Uh, Eaton does have, and is very well known to organize those 175 countries around the world. Uh, one of the the main points is kind of the. Um, uh, the um, the the amount of like thought that goes into like each each individual sector is kind of honed in into one one thing. So we didn't find that as a as a weakness. We actually found that as a benefit. One of the uh, um, the weaknesses that we did find is kind of um, holding those different departments and different uh, not different companies but different sectors uh, that were doing uh, weren't doing so well as the others. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, but yeah. That was kind of one of our strengths, actually, that we knew how to manage uh, worldwide sectors. Excellent. Thank you. Next question. Good evening. Jay here. Can you hear me? Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Well, first of all, I enjoyed the presentation. I thought it was very good. Uh, my question is about the affinity diagram I know uh, I noticed that you gave an example showed an example for the SWAT uh, the affinity you told what it does my question would be if I didn't know anything about the infinity diagram how would you set it up I mean how would like uh, an example how you would set up an affinity diagram uh, it's kind of what I was explaining. It's it's one of these things that comes on for for brainstorming. So usually, uh, I like to do it when it's uh, people who don't know each other and are coming in as a new team for the first time. Uh, you essentially get a, a large room, uh, sticky pads and markers, really, and you get the right people to kind of like hash things out. Um, uh, kind of give an example where like I usually tend to like let people think on their own. So the first 15 minutes of of, uh, of starting. I have everybody individually just at their at their tables or wherever they're sitting with their sticky pad. Just start writing ideas as as they come. Uh, we'll we'll pick a subject. Uh, you know, how do you, um, where do you see the organization in five years? Kind of go. And one of the big things is to make people comfortable that um, there is no wrong answer. Um, as we get farther along in the process, they we will. Um, you know, start phasing some of the unnecessary or the things that we don't need to, that are relevant out, and then we'll just move forward. So, so that's how you start. You basically start with people and kind of holding it, honing in on their own kind of thoughts and, and, and let the process kind of guide itself. Of course, the facilitator has to know kind of to read the people, kind of keep asking questions, kind of sort of create a um, philosophy discussion behind every sticky note and see, you know, don't let the conversation die. And that's kind of like an experience that, uh, that you gain just after doing this for a while. OK, thank you. Any other questions or feedback or recommendations? Um, this other guy, I, I have a question. question. Go ahead, Megan. Thanks, Edgar. My question was, um, how how are you all tracking the continuous improvement? You said that you all were working with the manager about the continuous improvement. Like, are they tracking that so you can see whether or not it's making a difference? Yeah. So um, it's tracked. It's tracked daily weekly and then monthly so um all the way through the process so um as we change different things in the process um and um, implement those uh we're verifying that they're changing they're making a change and it's actually improving um the situation and the yield um or if it's not and we can take that back out and put something else in 
but um, it's tracked on a daily basis as the product goes through the um, assembly line and um, make sure that the, the yield's still good. Um, it's, it has a lot of focus and a lot of people are looking at it. So it's not just our team um, implementing these um, suggestions. We're coming up with the suggestions and uh, the data, using the data to back it up and then uh, it's being vetted out before they put it into um, the actual production line. So um, it's actually getting backed um, on multiple levels and um, it's tracked um, in those different scenarios um, by yield every day. And then we verify the scrap and the rework numbers. We actually do rework by labor dollar um, that's used. So um, those three metrics uh, we verify weekly and then monthly it all rolls into a dashboard. Thanks. Okay, last call. Well, Any other yeah, questions? Um, yeah, I have one. Go ahead, Edgar. Um, I was wondering, were there, in, were there any brainstormed uh, questions that kind of may have led you to kind of a, an aha type of movement um, that pointed out what the greatest strengths or weaknesses or opportunities or threats were? When, uh, when I started, we started doing the, um, the uh, SWAT, um, which we're, it's for the next presentation, but we, we just kind of started beginning. We started leveraging what was out there in, um, uh, on the web. So we not only took uh, Eaton's uh, website and got looked to see if they had a SWAT thing going, but we actually leveraged a lot of like uh, common uh, papers and everything. There's, there's actually a lot of analysis on, from different points of view. And um, from, from investment companies and stuff like that, there's actually a, a vast assortment of, of resources out there. Once we kind of got an idea of what, how, you know, what other people think, we kind of started looking into that and started kind of uh, funneling down to what rung, you know, kind of like uh, resound with us and kind of just started uh, whittling down our list to, uh, to what we feel is uh, appropriate. Thank you, sir. Are there any more questions? All right. Nice job, team. I think you've got a really good start. Yeah, I like I liked the uh, problem statement and the fact that you've got some quantitative numbers there. That's very effective. And I think you guys are on are on a good good start. So well done. Okay, I'm going to make the next team presenter. Let's see, uh, make presenter. All right. You should. The second team should be ready to go. You should have on your monitor that you're the presenter. Are you seeing the, uh, the transfer? Um, yes, I am seeing it, but okay. it's requiring me to to download something first. So, is it? Let's see if I can. Let me turn it off and back on and see if that changes it. Hold on, I'll put it, I'll put it back to me and then bring it back to you because normally okay. it doesn't do that. Okay, so it's it's come to my. You should just get a square that says show my my screen. All right, so you see mine now. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try saying it back to you. Okay. All right, it's saying that there's evidently something that's not on your screen, on your computer that needs to be downloaded. It should only take a second. If you don't want to do that, then I can pick somebody else. But it should ask you to just click on the download and it's it's I think it's the uh, interface that you need for for a go to meeting okay Let's see if it works yeah I can see your screen so you should okay. you should be in the drivers
should be in the driver's seat, and I'll get out of the way, and good luck. Can everybody see the slides? Yes. Yes. OK. So our master's business project is about aircraft readiness and parts availability. Um, our team members are Matthew Fountain, Megan Holmes, Jamie O'Carter, and Judith Anton, and myself. So the 71st Rescue Squadron is our project sponsor organization. Their mission statement is, we maintain so others may live. And what they do is they provide air support, as in refueling other aircraft in the air, rescue operations, combat support, transport, and drop off of equipment and people to selected destinations. Um, they are found at the Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. They have a workforce of about 350 plus personnel. Um, the specific aircraft that we're working on is a C-130J Combat King II, and there's a total of nine of these aircraft. Our champion is Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Dunstan. He is the commander of the 71st Maintenance Squadron, and he has the authority to ensure any and all resources are available. And the guiding coalition consists of Captain Mark Smith, who is the officer in charge of the 72nd Aircraft Maintenance Unit, Chief Velasquez, who is in charge of the 273rd AMU. He is the 273rd AMU superintendent and the rest of the 71st Rescue Squadron. Judith? But, oh, okay, good. Um, so due to the critical mission um, that the organization um, should be always ready for, it has become apparent while looking through the problem set that the main issue resides with their of, of ability to, re, to receive the parts needed in order to get the, the aircraft fully mission capable. So this problem statement reflect the key goal that we have uh, that we have to lessen um, the downtime of these aircraft and to do re to reduce their delays in unscheduled maintenance um, aircraft maintenance. Slide, please. The organization's main goal is to always be available to answer the nation's call. In order to do so, they need to be combat ready. Combat readiness for the 723rd maintenance group is to bring their fleet of C 130Js to be fully mission capable. Per their motto, excellence, pride, and professionalism, they have a standard to uphold, which they have been struggling to do due to maintenance problems plaguing the unit. The day to day champion um, in one of our surveys that we sent, he extend, uh, expressed the fact that. Due to the fact that they are, they have to rely on outside organizations like like Ed Martin Dowdy Propellers. It's been very hard to get parts once they ordered, so they have to rely heavily on headquarters to intercede on their behalf in order to get um, support from vendor contractors. And also, as stated by the champion. If the aircraft remain non-mission capable for an extended period of time, they are unable to meet the nation's call to action when necessary. And as we can see right now, per um, Hurricane Harvey's devastation in Texas, the aircrafts have become very valuable. So it's 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 totally imperative that we, have, um, as the goal for this MVP, to bring this unit up to par with a streamlined process that will assist them in meeting their goals in supporting the nation's call. Next. Sir, I think this slide, Matthew wanted to brief it. Okay, Matthew wanted to what? Okay.
Okay, it looks like he's saying Matt is up. Matthew, yes, Matthew has been typing his answer, sir. Right, I'm reading him. Thanks. Okay, is that the last slide? For Megan? No, no, go ahead. Can you go to the, there we go. So some of our requirements that we decided for brainstorming and sanity diagram would include set up instructions, um, set up the room with materials such as sticky notes, chairs, and a flat upright surface, a, which would be a wall or two boards. Um, and then to have staff to participate in the f affinity diagram construct. And we would, you know, ask the two MVP managers, maintenance team representatives, and the champions to participate into this. And then our next one was logistic requirements. So we would want to schedule an hour off for the participants um, and have questions for the focus group and secure the location. Next slide. Some of the questions um, that we thought we could ask to help with the brainstorming of this diagram would be for the aircraft undergoing uninspected maintenance, which is the greatest factor that increases time to the FMC status? And can you name two parts that are most likely to cause an unscheduled maintenance and how often does that happen? You can go to the next one. And these are just more questions that we had for the focus group. Um, in your opinion, how much of a factor does the supply team have on the maintenance timeline? And who conducts the inspections? Can the inspection guidelines be easily found on the premises and followed by the maintenance crew slash team? You can go to the next one. Yeah. All right. This is a. This is me. Okay. Basically, this is uh how we set up our infinity diagram. You know the steps that we would take to get bring all this together. First of all, we get the focus group together. You know, get them settled in, relaxed, and also we let them know. To add, we encourage them to ask questions and give ideas. You no, know, no question is stupid. No idea is stupid. We want to ask up to. 10 specific questions, you know, related to the, the problem or the process. Next, we want to generate some answers for the questions. This is our brainstorming. You know, everybody write down their ideas or questions or whatever they're thinking about and put them on the sticky notes. So we take the sticky notes and we put them on the board. With those sticky notes, we want to generate some specific topics. The specific topics, we want to take all our brainstorming ideas or suggestions on the sticky notes and place them under the, the topics all your related ideas or suggestions and put them under the main topic okay and we would close out see if anybody had any last minute questions or ideas they'd want to let them see the final product which would be the sticky notes on the board and Take any inputs. 
Next slide. Okay, this is just an example of our infinity diagram. Here you'd see where we've got our main topics, or our headers, and under each header is uh, the subjects or ideas that are related to that uh, header. But we have quality, we have serviceable parts under quality, correctly labeled parts, quantity of available parts, parts delivered. Workers, under workers we have training, uh, supply access authorization for the workers, and shift coverage. Just some of the examples of part of our affinity diagram. Next slide. Okay, this is uh, applying the SWOT analysis to our affinity diagram. So if all of our headers and our ideas that we had on the affinity diagram, we'd break it down into our SWOT and our strength, strength weaknesses. Also, we would do the same with the force field analysis. We'd have factors for and factors against. And then we would uh, use a Pareto chart, use this for the groups of categories or the SWOT designators to highlight infinity or strategic ideas, which were 20% of the cause. It may potentially lead to 80% of the effects for the leads into the strong improvement of the process. Next. Okay, that is it for us. Anybody has any questions or suggestions, feel free. All right, any comments? This is Edgar. I, have, I may have a question. Go ahead. Um, I really liked how you guys uh, have the applying strategic analysis uh, that that actually, that slide itself, uh, to me, was very informative, and it, it kind of gave me something else to think about as well. Uh, my main question is, have there been any thoughts about uh, creating more of a culture with the suppliers uh, in order to optimize efficiency or standardization, especially when it comes to the forms that were being mentioned uh, to make the process easier? Yeah. Uh. It, it has, that's a battle, a back and forth battle, because our suppliers, they're contractors and they have us locked into a contract. So basically they do and say whatever they want. And their focus is not on if we have the parts that we need to secure our nation, but making a profit. Gotcha, thank you, sir. Any other recommendations or observations? Okay, well, team, I think you've got a really good start. I think it's gonna be a very interesting uh, project. I had a couple things I was just gonna share, just uh, not as, they are not criticisms, they're just suggestions for uh, long-term. Could you click on the uh, problem statement slide? So we can see that slide and I'll. Thank you. This is a, ve it's a very good uh, problem statement. The one thing I would suggest you think about uh, and I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just suggesting you think about it. You notice where it says reduce delays uh, and it talks about uh, improving the turnaround and so forth. One of the things you may want to consider is whether or not you can quantify uh, how much of a delay or how much lost time or how many fewer aircraft you're doing because of whatever your root cause problem is. Because once you do that, you're going to be able to then quantify that and say, all right, if we fix our problem, we're going to gain these 16 hours a week or we're going to process two extra aircraft a week or a month. And once you can do that, you're going to be able to quantify that and figure out a value, a financial value. Because in your final project, you're going to have to show an ROI and a, and a, and a, uh, 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 a payback period 
And if you don't have these quantified, if all you're talking about is subjective improvement, then you're going you're gonna to then be scratching your head at the very last minute trying to figure out how to quantify that. So one of the things that often happens in military commands, since there's really no profit, is you can look at things like, right, can you save uh, hours? If you're saving hours, you can either express it by the number of people engaged and what they cost, or you by the amount of extra work you're able to do and what that gains the command. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so just think about it. And if you can, then you can, as you're moving through your project, you can, you can uh, modify this problem statement. You're not locked into it concrete wise, as long as you're not changing the concept. The other comment I had is just move down to the next slide, slide six. And I just want to show you something just from a, an ease of uh, presentation. Okay, slides six and seven have a lot of really good information on it, but they're very wordy. And what, and what PowerPoint's intended to be is a, a talking point document that allows you to brief somebody or brief an organization on details. So what we try to do on PowerPoint is make these slides uh, crisp and to the point rather than very, very wordy. On the other hand, you don't want to lose the good information you have here. So if you look at PowerPoint and its setup, there's a place where you can put speaker's notes on every slide. And you can take a lot of the content you see here and put it in the speaker's notes so that whoever makes the presentation is able to verbally express the, those elements that are important to you, but you don't have them on the slide. And the reason you don't want them on the slide is what happens is I sit here and start reading your slide and not listening to what you're saying, and you lose your audience. So you've got a lot of really good information. You don't want to lose them. They, you want them to hear you. So by using the speaker's notes and by saying the information rather than putting it on the slide and reading it, you, it's easier for you to hold the audience and hold their attention. And, and, and that's true in, in six and seven are good examples. Again, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, and again, if you like it this way, leave it alone. It's your presentation. I'm just trying to help you uh, as you move along in, in, the, in the program that you don't get bogged down and lose your audience. Other than that, I think, it's, I think you all have got a really good start. It's good information. I think you're going you're gonna to be able to quantify it, uh, and I believe it's an important project. So well done. Okay, I'm going to take you, back. Sir. I'm going to take back control, and I think you're on a really, really good start. Okay, and let's see our next person. Let me get him designated. Is Cameron, I believe, if my memory serves me right. Let's see. If I can get my cursor to cooperate. Okay, you're probably also, Cameron, going to see the software download. If you just click on it, it'll set up the links, and then you'll be able to show your screen. Do you see it? Uh, yeah, I click download and it is. It'll take a couple of minutes, but it shouldn't take very long. It's just the it's the links to allow you to use uh, go to meeting, and then it should come back and show. Do you want to share your screen? All right. It said it encountered an error can you resend it yeah let me turn it back to me and i'll do it again give it a second and i will send you again okay you should have it now I'm still getting a error saying that um, 
It did not launch. Please try again. Okay. <clears throat> if you want, you could try sending it to me. Uh, I can try to run it from mine. All right. You want me to? Try, I'll let me try Edgar, and if that doesn't work, I'll come back. Okay. Okay, Edgar, it should be coming to your machine. Okay, I see your screen. I'll shut up. Y'all take it away. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Team UTC which is Edgar Martinez and myself, Cameron Helland. Uh, next slide, please. So UTC's mission statement is uh, we strive to provide our customers with innovative aerospace technologies uh, and integrated systems that advance the performance, safety, and efficiency of commercial aviation, global defense, and space exploration. Um, uh, our operating principles, um, we refer to them as the four gears because one drives the other and so forth, um, which is people, uh, integrity, ideas, and performance. So we look as the people drive the integrity of the company, which then drives the ideas and then drives the performance. Uh, next slide. Okay, so our our current team right now persists of our senior champion being our department manager, Mark Posada. Our day-to-day -day champions are Guillermo Gonzalez, who's our direct supervisor. Uh, Mike McCurrick, who is the production supervisor of the cell that uh, we're working. And Angela Damien is another one of our managers uh, who also has inspector, uh, quality inspection uh, uh, experience. Um, and so these people are the ones that uh, we're looking forward to uh, share our information with. Our current problem statement is that uh, there's quality processes, inconsistencies, and paperwork errors that have led to customer escapes from our uh, Boeing 737 production cell, and it is not meeting the established 98.8% uh, first pass yield metric that has been established as the goal for this year. Uh, so far, we have been behind, uh, we have fallen. Uh, short of meeting that goal and our current uh, project is to help better that uh, with the hopes that if we don't do it this year or help better by the end of the year that we do so starting uh, next year which we may modify a problem statement later to include that. Okay, so our champion strategic priorities, um, of course, is meeting our exceeding the FPY percentage goal. Um, in order to do so, uh, we have to look to uh, reduce the rejections and customer escapes. Obviously, we don't want our customers to receive defects or non-conformancies um, from our products, um, or especially if uh, one of our products fail out in the field, um, it could uh, result in um, fatality which we definitely don't want that. Um, so by reducing that, um, we hope to reduce a lot of the rework and labor costs um, from nonconformance or defects that we um, produce throughout our, our process. Um, and uh, also to increase and better our on-time delivery to our customers. Um, obviously, the customers don't want to receive their product late. It makes them very unhappy. Um, and that follows with the next one, which is increased customer satisfaction. Um, some of the internal um, priorities that our champion um, has is to make a faster access and location of knowledge of our QA interlinked folders and systems. So a lot of our folders that we use are kind of all over the place. So uh, being, able, being able to create, say, a dashboard to where all the folders that we need are right there um, creates uh, uh, better ease for our inspectors um, so they don't have to track a bunch of stuff down, um, which falls into the next one, which is making greater, greater ease of our data entry and tracking, um, and then provide a better communication amongst the QA team and department. So that could be our quality team with the production team or our 
quality or one quality team in one department to a quality team in another department being able to be on the same page and know the issues that they're they might be experiencing and so forth so that um where there's no uh it's, it's very transparent and we're all on the same page next slide please all right so Operational planning, uh, we, we plan on scheduling monthly meetings with our champion to update with our current progress. Obviously, we want to keep him uh, involved um, and aware of our progress and any issues that we have that he might have the authority to uh, fix for us or um, just input from him, ideas that he has that maybe he heard um, up in the food chain that maybe we haven't heard of. Um, just. Uh, incorporating his ideas and his knowledge into um, what we do. Um, and of course, scheduling training for our new dashboard. Um, once we roll that out, um, we're hope well, obviously we have to um, train uh, our entire team on how to use it. And then um, as of right now, there is no current financial restraints that we uh, foresee, but this could, could change in the future, hopefully not. <clears throat> Next slide. So in developing our SWAT, um, the WHO would be our MVP champion, uh, the everyday champions. Uh, I include the sub-supervisor though, even, even though he's an everyday champion. Uh, we need at least two to three um, quality subject matter experts, people who've actually worked in quality for a while, know the processes, uh, know what is actually supposed to happen in case an issue comes up or just have a better idea of how to research for the information needed whenever there is questions for uh, 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 whether it be production or the engineers. Uh, I just saw a question from Matthew, what is a parking lot? A parking lot, um, I'll get to it right now in a second, I'll, I'll give you an idea. Um, we need two cell operators, subject matter experts. Uh, this is because we like to get their intake on what they see as our strengths and weaknesses, op uh, opportunities and threats. Um, a lot of the things that affect us directly affect them and vice versa. Uh, so having their input uh, is greatly, greatly contributes to us and a lot of times it makes the job easier as well. Uh, so we just have to kind of try to figure out a way of figuring out the specific individuals when it comes to the QAs and the cell operators uh, and more so in evaluating uh, the importance of who uh, who we want to pick uh, to participate. Uh, the what would be to go over the current state map and the future state map within uh, the time allowed. The overall time allowed, we'd like to take maybe 10 minutes to do so, uh, just to give an overall view of what's going on and what we hope uh, to complete. Uh, we have a list of questions that we go over for about five minutes just to ponder. And after those five minutes, we spend about 30 minutes writing down any, any ideas, uh, or things that come up because of the questions or even any new questions. We spend about 10 minutes categorizing the, uh, the ideas that were written down in post-it notes, uh, varying by category association on our SWAT. Uh, so to answer Matthew's question, a parking lot is we usually have like this big board that we'll bring into the meeting. And if there's a question that, that we can't answer during our meeting, uh, we put it as a parking lot. So we'll write the question on this board and we'll assign someone to get an answer as soon as possible. And then those answers are sent out to uh, the rest of the other people in the group. Uh, so I'll, I'll text that into Matthew in a little bit. Uh, but that essentially is the parking lot questions again. It's just uh, it's a side, side questions that we don't have a direct answer to at the moment of the meeting. Uh, but we will do our best to get an answer to and communicate it back out to the whole group so that everybody's aware or has a, an idea of, of what, we're, of what the, the answer to the question would be. So the logistics, um, this is more the questions themselves. Um, I probably won't go over it through a lot of them, but one of the things that we noticed is um, I think one of our, one of our weaknesses is more so the culture within our quality department, uh, more so in terms of uh, almost age. A lot of uh, what we've seen is that a lot of the people who've worked there for a while or 
older in age, uh, they have a lot, a lot harder of a time trying to track down information, uh, or the systems. They, they don't really know how to manage or work the systems in an efficient manner. So one of the things that we, uh, and I'll see. I think we might have in our affinity diagram, but um, a lot of these questions. Uh, are pretty much the ones we want to ask. And like I said, I know I may have jumped the gun on the culture one, but that's at least one of the things that we've seen so far uh, that could be uh, more so tied to our um, our root cause. Uh, oh, so I changed it. Sorry, the headings were supposed to be swapped out. Uh, so this is actually the logistics. Uh, so we need a, uh, to book a room big enough uh, to fill out our participants, print out all the questions for everybody to have on hand. Uh, we need big, shape, big sheets of paper uh, to write down our parking lot questions. Uh, like I said, to put in accountabilities to who is going to be in charge of getting an answer and by when they're going to have that answer. The post-its to write our ideas on, uh, both the current and future state maps. A projector in case we need to do a presentation um, or to access uh, some of the systems or documents that we use live just to showcase um, how how sometimes how time how much time it actually takes to get to those uh, systems or or documents and uh, uh, writing utensils just pens and markers All right, so here is some potential um, uh, sticky notes that Edgar and I came up with. Um, so for financial um, inputs, we have labor costs and training costs. Um, of course, labor costs for um, creating the dashboard and, and, and all that. And then, of course, training costs for training um, the inspectors on how to use the new dashboard or the new process. Um, possible process issues that we could encounter would be, uh, of course, still human error, the incorrect data input. Um, human error you can try to minimize, but it's something that you can never ex uh, completely eliminate. Uh, process deviation, um, an inspector just choosing not to follow the process or a operator choosing not to follow the process. Um, production process changes, so we could have this great plan planned out and then you know a year from now they might uh, operations might change the way they do things so then we have to counter and and change our process to adapt to theirs um, new revisions to forms um, periodically forms yeah they they get changed and updated and so we have to update our um, process for the um, certain revision changes that might happen and then ensure training delivery completeness. Of course, got to make sure that we um, deliver on our, our training to everyone and that everyone comprehends the training that they received. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. So logistically, uh, computer issues. So while creating the dashboard, I, um, there could be possible uh, folder issues to where someone can't access or doesn't have authorization to access a certain folder. Um, that could be an issue that would have to get corrected. Um, and then uh, software changes. So if, if they update, say, SAP, and now someone doesn't have access to this, or it changes the way that the dashboard um, finds certain data within SAP, um, that's would have to be a whole new type of script writing that would have to be changed. Um, and other issues, uh, of course, employee buy-in is a big thing. Um, a lot of the people resist change sometimes, so trying to get them to buy into the new process could be difficult. And like Edgar had mentioned before, there's a lot of um, experienced um, or older um, inspectors that have been in the company for years and years, so they're used to doing things their way. Um, so it could be difficult to get uh, employee buy-in all around. Um, and operator errors is something that um, we would encounter too. On it, it kind of goes back to the human factor, but um, 
it, it's going to happen. And then of course, supplier issues too. Um, it's another thing that we, we try to uh, plan for, but you never know when it's going to happen. And um, you just kind of got to be as proactive as you can. I believe that is it. If you give me a moment, I'm going to uh, reply to Matthew uh, well, if you guys have any questions for the moment being. All right. Anyone have any questions or comments? All right. Well, I, I think I think you've got a good project going team. And the one thing, the one observation, again, I would make with yours similar to the last one is on your problem statement. Uh, if ever ever gets a chance, perhaps he can move the slide back to the to the problem statement. It might be easier to understand. Thank you. This is a very crisp and well-written problem statement. The one thing you might think about is if you notice you're talking about that the goal is 98.8% and that you're not achieving it, you might want to decide whether or not you need to divulge what the current uh, level is. Or if you don't want to express it in that fashion, you might try and see if you can quantify dollar-wise or cost-wise what the delta is between your current location and this 98.8%, uh, because that may, if you achieve it, then that's obviously the savings or the, or the cost gain that the, that the company is going to realize. So you'll have quantified your problem. Even if later on in the problem, you decide you can't reach 98.8, you're going to get to 83. You can always recalculate that number, but it's, it's, it would make the problem statement a lot more, uh, expressive if somehow you could explain what the cost of the association the organization is for where you are versus where you should be does that make sense oh definitely we um we and i should have actually gone back and done an average of because it, because we do it monthly mm -hmm. um i could have added an average and i completely forgot to check with cameron sure uh, and, to throw that in there and it's not anything critical. It's just it's going to become an issue later on when you're trying to show what you accomplished. If you get to that 98.8 and you've told them in the beginning that getting to that's going to save $5,000 a month, then you've already established that and you, and, you, and you then can say we made our goal. You can always later on change it uh, before you get to, to graduation if you don't quite achieve it. Uh, and And – you can also say that hey, they're going to get it next year, but we then you can quantify your number and say we got two thirds of it, and this is what we gained. Sorry, that that really that's the only uh, thought that I had as far as making your presentation a little clearer. That's the only place where I think you're you, you could you could actually tweak it at this point. Thank you. Good job. All right, let me take back control. So, I, did we get through all of the? Uh, did, did all the teams got to present? Correct. Is there anyone that I missed? All right. No, all teams presented. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All teams. Okay. Good. No, no, just uh, all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, I just didn't want to move on and then find out that I I jumped over somebody. So. Based on those presentations, other than the assignment that we'll talk about in a minute that you've got for this week, we've really gotten to the point where we've we've covered the material that was that was important for this for this course. Uh, and I wanted to take a few minutes just to go back and re refresh our memories as far as some of the things we've talked about. Uh, we wanted to be able to describe the value of strategic planning for bringing about organizational change, and we talked in detail about the fact that. Uh, organi organizational change is something that m most organizations struggle with. It's always occurring. You can't avoid it. And the key element uh, that we that we need to understand is how do how do we address change, and how do we, if we're going to have to deal with it, how do we minimize the risk associated with change? And the answer is through strategic planning. And so the process we've talked about over the last four weeks 
was designed to give you a, an understanding of the, the importance of strategic planning and how it can be used to manage change and to minimize risk. We wanted to understand the this, this strategic planning concept and various models, and we talked about a number of ways that, that strategic planning is done. We want to be able to identify the various strategic planning roles uh, that quality professionals may encounter in the workplace. And in that regards, it's things like project management and project leadership, quality leadership, uh, so the, the, the operational uh, organizations using continuous improvement for the purposes of addressing uh, issues. We talked about senior leadership and middle management, the fact that, that you drive uh, uh, things such as uh, visions and, and objectives and goals from the top, and then you implement them in the middle with the middle management, and then you write tactical plans for the purposes of lower management. And then understand the planning, co coordination, assessment, facilitate activities required, involved in uh, developing of a strategic plan. And we talked about the process of going through the, the strategic side of it and then moving into an operational side and getting into the tactical application. And we, and we talked about some of the skills that you'll learn through project management uh, when, you, when you get involved with, with uh, strategic planning. And we, we talked about being able to identify the implementation development actions in supporting a strategic plan. So we spent about a week talking about once you've done that strategic planning and you've gotten that vision, what do you do about it? Well, you develop an implementation plan and you develop an action plan uh, or actually you do the act development of the action plan and, and then you figure out how you're going to implement it. That's something you will do with your benchmark uh, projects in the last two courses of the program, you'll be dealing in, in, in implementation pro strategies for your, pro for your projects. We talked about the fact that uh, you'll spend time with your sponsor at the end, uh, uh, sharing the accomplishments of your project and talking about how they can implement that and ensure continuity going forward within the organization once you and your team go away and how they should implement that uh, organizational wide. So uh, that was one of the concepts that we talked about. Uh, demonstrating the ability to integrate organizational improvement, such as your MVP, with strategic priorities and other planning activities. So we tried to make the transition from just corporate strategic planning and how you could use those tools and, and so forth to uh, implement your MVP and to work through your MVP. Uh, Strategic planning and project management are two of the major foundations or backbones to an, to an effective MVP. Using those uh, type of skills will make your project uh, both realistic and more effective. And demonstrating the ability of an individual and a team to collect data and develop comprehensive SWOT analysis. And we, tonight, all three of the teams talked in, in relatively uh, high detail about a SWOT analysis and how important that analysis concept is uh, for implementation of an effective strategic plan. Uh, that concept of how to use uh, a SWOT and how to use data an anal an analysis is something that's going to be important, not only here in your degree, but it's going to be critical in your success as you move through your career once you graduate. Uh, it's also, there are also skills that can be very effective just in your own planning of your family and your personal life. So I would encourage you to, to use those skills. For example, uh, I think my wife's better at SWOT analysis than I am uh, because we use it very effectively, especially when we've had to deal with some things relative to our, our children. Uh, when we had uh, teenagers at home, it was very common that we would sit in the family room when we had an issue that the family needed to decide priorities and, and, and what we were going to do about something. And we actually did a SWOT analysis and got the young people involved in, in the process. And by doing that, they, they were able to understand it and, and get engaged. Uh, so I would encourage you to think about uh, that type of, of, of situation as well. Uh, be able to use SWOT analysis to develop goals and objectives. Uh, goals and objectives are the action verbs and adjectives for a, for a vision. And so when we start looking at how and what 
goals and objectives companies should use, SWOT analysis is a great way to brainstorm and come up with a, uh, a solution uh, for, for how to implement. Standard criteria for effective missions, visions, and guidance principles and statements, and being able to conduct analysis on real-world examples. Okay, that, that bullet is, is what we talked about in the very beginning relative to mission and vision and how, you, how the mission and vision statements uh, build on each other, and same with the principles and values. Your class assignment this week, you're going to apply some of those uh, uh, concepts on a company of your choice. There's three that are recommended. We'll look at that in a minute. But you can pick any company that you have access to the information. So uh, it, I would encourage you to, to uh, think about that implementation as you're doing that assignment this week. And then be able to create goals, smart objectives. We talked about what a smart objective was that incorporate incorporates uh, systems thinking and specifically balanced scorecard frameworks into our analysis and presentation. Balanced scorecards we talked about for a number of uh, weeks uh, as an example of a way in which you can use vi a visual presentation to present data to leadership to allow them to make informed decisions without having to go through all the garbage that's involved in the different reports. Now, the bean counters and the analysts all love the data, but at the end of the day, management makes decisions based on observations and based on assessments, not on the raw data. Benchmarking, balanced scorecards, visual presentations are all tools that are designed to allow the analyst to present the concepts to leadership in a fashion in which they can make informed but quick decisions without having to, to look at all of the data that's behind it. Where companies sometimes fail is they, they do not build up and develop the analytic staff that's behind those reports uh, so that when they get the balanced scorecard or they get the visual presentation, uh, it is sometimes flawed because they didn't invest the time and money in developing the analysts that are behind it. Because uh, after all, the reports are only as good as the an analysis that's being done uh, based on the raw material. Okay. Now, before I move on, I was just going to look at, uh, I think Matthew has a question here. Okay, he was asking questions about, about one of the projects. So if you all would look at Matthew's question as it pertains to the, the, uh, the project we just did, he's, he's asking a question relative to your project, I believe. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, you can either answer, you can, if, you, if you can type it here or you can email it to him or you could, if you want to get, have time, I'll be happy to put you on point uh, so he can uh, so he can hear it when they do the transcript. Okay, so your assignments for this week, there's assignment two, that's the team project that's due for this week. This is the instructions from the organization that will, is well established in the public domain, such as McDonald's, Apple, Microsoft, or, or Ikea, uh, are well known to the student team. Research and develop the uh, below listed strategic planning items the organization must be a public must have a public vision, mission, and guiding principle. So, while they're telling you you could use any one of these four companies, if you all have access or interest in another company, you can feel free to use anyone that you can get the data on uh, for that. This this is a uh, a PowerPoint, so it's not a paper. It's not. It should be relatively crisp. It's going to be a handful of, of slides, probably a dozen slides by the time you finish. But it should go pretty quickly once you find the material because you're just, you're transposing some of it. Uh, but the intent here is you're using that company to try and build the skeleton of a strategic uh, planning document that they might use. It's it sh this should be a relatively simple uh, assignment. The way most teams in the past have uh, have done this assignment is they've broken the slides up between the members, had each member work on a certain part and then pull it back together and have the team review it uh, for accuracy and continuity uh, before submitting. So it shouldn't be a difficult assignment. I just didn't feel that we were going to have time to do it justice 
trying to cram that all into what you were doing for this week and this evening. So I wanted to give you the extra time. Because I'm giving you the extra uh, time to get it done, I'm asking to have it finished by Sunday midnight. Uh, and the reason for that is I will review it Monday morning. And if there's any of them that need a little bit of tweaking, I will send it back to the team so they have Monday and, and uh, Tuesday to uh, resubmit because my goal is to make sure you all get maximum points on these assignments. If the assignment is acceptable as submitted, then you won't have to do any rework on it. But that's the reason why I'm asking for Sunday midnight so that I can get it back to you by, t by midday on Monday. And you'll have then Monday night and Tuesday to, to maximize your, your point count. That is in a nutshell the course, except for the discussion question that we'll have for this week. Does anybody have any questions or comments that you have or want to offer? Any comments about the class as a whole? I mean, this is your chance. Uh, I guarantee it's not going to impact your grade. So if there's, there's some area that you feel that I could improve the course for your benefit, feel free to let me know. If you don't want to do it in this venue, you can send me an email. Your grades are pretty much locked in, so you know I'm not going to be able to penalize you. Plus, it's not my style anyway. I'd rather, if I would screwed up or didn't handle the material properly, I'd love to hear from you directly or indirectly. So uh, any comments or feedback? Um, this Edgar, I'd mm -hmm. say uh, if anything, thank you for introducing SWAP because I've heard of it, but I never knew what it was or how it worked. And mm -hmm. this definitely gave me a better, clearer picture of it. Good, thank you. Anyone else? I was going to say the same thing. Um, learning about the SWAT was very useful because the following week after we learned it here in class, I was actually um, able to be a part working with my quality manager and the safety manager in developing our SWOT analysis at our facility. That's great. One of the things I love about this kind of a program, especially with working uh, professionals, whether they're military or civilian, is that you get to f learn something in class and then immediately put it to work and try it. And then you can come back and tell the professor, hey, dummy, you told me this and it, it and how it was going to work and it didn't work or it worked well. Uh, it reinforces your learning. It reinforces the value that you're getting out of the program. And it, it usually gets people excited about continuing to learn new things. So well done. Anyone else? So coming, this is Judith Antoine, coming from a military perspective, I like um, when you superimpose the two, the civilian side and the military side, I'm able to understand both sides. And as Megan stated, even in my organization, we're doing um, that analysis right now, trying to identify our weaknesses, our strengths, and how better to streamline our process to make sure everybody's on the, uh, is properly assigned to the right tasks. Great. Yeah, I, I'm a firm believer that that the principles that we that we talk about in this program or any MBA or management uh, program have have application both in the private sector and in the and in the public sector and in the military. And obviously, I'm biased with 30 years in Navy myself, active in reserve. I mean, I I get up every morning and I miss the Navy every day I get up. So I I know where you're at, and uh, I do understand that. And that's why I try to help the military understand, the military folks understand how, what they're learning in a, from a military's perspective, how it's going to apply once they get out and they want to apply these in a professional mode. They're, the concepts work both places. You just sometimes have to think slightly different. Obviously, in business, it's all about P&L and making money. But in the government, it's about saving money and properly using the money that you're given. Uh, and spending it in the right place. Uh, and so both of which uh, fits our, our business model from the standpoint of the university because your MVP can be based on profit or it can be based on savings. And I think I shared early in this course, uh, the last five years working for the state of Texas, teaching this to the Department of Public Safety, uh, they had not gotten a, a, a budget increase from the state in, in 10 years. Over the last five years, uh, I was able to save them in excess of $40 million that they were able to reinvest in themselves 
without re any program reduction. And it was all about teaching these concepts. So I'm glad that you see the, the parity uh, and the fact that both civilian and, and military can work together with the concepts. Anyone Thank else? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. While you're thinking, I'll close with this comment. I I have spent, and I don't, may have shared this early on. I'm not sure I did, but I've I've been in. You know, I'm old. I'm old as dirt. My college roommate was Noah, so I've been around a long time. Uh, Forty years of of professional business experience on top of 30 years Navy. Uh, obviously, because it, a lot of it was done reserve, they were signed. They were together. But I've been in, I've been working for over 40 years. I've spent uh, the better part of that in some type of education as an adult. I graduated from college and I've been doing studying ever since. I've got two masters and almost a PhD and I've taken a lot of extra courses. And one of the things I've learned over the years is that online education, uh, while 10, 15 years ago was considered to be a, a freak and it wasn't going to last, I believe it's the future of education. And I believe that the the average university is not going to be able to stay in business without using adult uh, uh, online education. Working adults have to maintain their lifestyle and live with their families and take care of their families. And they don't have the luxury of stopping to work unless they win the, uh, the, the uh, lottery and going to school full time. So you, th there needs to be an ability for adults to do exactly what you're doing. I have two master's uh, two MBAs. I did an MBA in the mid early seventies, brick and mortar at the university of, uh, of us uh, uh, a university in Ohio. And it was on the ground. It was a traditional one. I took time off and went to school for a year and a half and got it. I then got at my second MBA uh, about uh, 10 years ago, uh, online. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to teach and you had to be, you had to have had your degree within 10 years of when you started teaching and it had been 20. I can tell you that when I compare my brick and mortar education with the education I got online and in, with the education you're getting here, my education online was far superior to anything I ever got in brick and mortar as a full-time MBA student. I had instructors who had never worked a day in their life other than in a university, and they were teaching me concepts they had never had to use themselves, and it, it, it didn't work. And I was going full-time, so I wasn't able to go back to work and try what I was taught. So I'm a firm believer that the kind of education you're getting is the best education you can get, especially in a business application. And I encourage you to to embrace it and realize that you're that regardless of what anybody tells you about online education, this is the state of the art. This is where it's going to be in the future. Uh, and I encourage you and tell you, to, encourage you to enjoy it, test it, try everything you can, kick the wheels, go to work. And if it doesn't work, come back and tell your professor it didn't work and make him show you what went wrong. Uh, but uh, I encourage you uh, and I would encourage you never to stop learning. And that's my paid commercial. All right. Anything anybody else wants to share? Otherwise, I'm going to let you go home. And thank you, Matthew. I appreciate the fact that, that those concepts are, are helping you. All right. Well, we've reached the point of no return. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've, everybody was here uh, and uh, I've got the attendance. We have, uh, we have one more week of, uh, of, lecture, not lecture, but of uh, discussion online. I'll be there every day, just like I am, have been. Uh, and I, we've got the one team assignment to come back in and when we're done. If you have any questions, you want to stay online and talk to me, great. If not, we're, we're complete. You're free to go. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night.